Hello and welcome to Numeristical. My name is Brian Lucena and today we're going to be talking about classification models and specifically I'm going to lay out a, what I call a discrete probabilistic point of view, a framework for how to formulate a classification problem and how to work with it. So let's get started. So in standard classification framework you've got some predictors x that you are trying to use this is information that you have at your disposal that you're going to try to use to make some inferences some predictions about a target variable that's usually designated by y we'll call that a target or an outcome and the standard working paradigm is that you have some training data and from this training data you build a model and from that model you're able to make predictions on new cases. But to make this a little more clear and a little more tractable, we have to define what is a prediction, what is the training data, what's our representation for it, what notation are we going to use for it, and what is a model, how do we represent that object. And in this video, this is part one of a three-part series, in this video we're going to focus just on what is a prediction. So the first thing to know is that there are several different types of predictions one might make. Um, the first we'll talk about is what I call a hard prediction, where you're trying to predict the exact value of y given x. So an example of this might be an image classification task, where, say, you're given an image of a cat, and you expect your model to spit out the answer that this is unambiguously a cat. Now, in another class of problems, it might be unreasonable to expect that you would know the answer with such certainty. Uh, for example, let's say you were a bank and using machine learning model for loan default prediction. It might be unreasonable to say, given this loan amount, given this person's job history, given their current income, that they are absolutely certain to pay back their loan or absolutely certain to default on their loan. Generally, what you look for in those kinds of models is to predict the probability. What's the probability that this person is going to default on their loan? And in between these two predictions, there's another kind which is generally only applicable to binary classification, but it's what I'll call a ranking prediction. And in that style of prediction, you're providing a score for x, where a higher score means it's more likely that your y value is true. So remember, in binary classification, y can only take on two different possible values, so you often represent them as true or false, or one or zero. And so this score would typically represent that a higher score means you're more likely to be true or more likely to be one. So the score by itself doesn't tell you very much. Suppose I'm uh, giving you a fraud risk score and I tell you the fraud of risk score is 350. That might not mean anything by itself, but if you have a whole list of transactions, and let's say the fraud risk scores range from 10 to 1,000, we can now use that score to provide a ranked list of all the transactions from the most likely to be fraud to the least likely to be fraud. And using that ranked list, we can decide how, you know, which transactions we want to follow up on and give a sense of which transactions are more risky than others. So it's a way to provide a ranking of a set of items and that's why we call it a ranking prediction. Now associated with each of these kinds of predictions are different metrics and I'm not going to go into detail on the definitions of all these metrics that would probably take a whole nother video on its own. Um, but for those already familiar with these metrics, this might help clarify when you use different kinds of metrics. For a hard prediction, you have metrics like accuracy, precision, and recall, where you're given a list of the true answers and a list of your predicted answers. And from those two lists, you can calculate certain numbers. Accuracy would say, what's the percentage of cases where my model predicted the the correct answer and precision and recall would deal with what are the percentage of true cases that I correctly predicted 
in a ranking prediction, you're judging the quality of the entire ranking. So ranking predictions would take as input one way or another, the ranked list of all your predictions and the true answers. And from that, you could calculate things like the AUROC, so that's the area under the ROC curve, also called the AUC, also called the C statistic. Um, you'll also use, for example, a precision recall curve. These are very popular now in terms of judging the quality of our ranking prediction. Now, if you're making a probabilistic prediction, you typically want to use metrics like the log loss, also called the cross entropy, or the Breyer score. And log loss is uh, quite a complicated metric, and there'll be a separate video talking about log loss coming up. But the thing to note about these metrics is that they're additionally judging how well the probability is behaving as a probability. So when the model said 30%, if you look across all the times the model said 30%, was it really true 30% of the time, or was it only true 20% of the time, or actually true 40% of the time? Log loss will try to uh, will try to judge and attach a value to how well your probabilities behaved as true probabilities. Now, the way we've listed these kinds of predictions. We've listed it from the simplest kind of prediction on the top, which is the hard prediction, to kind of the most complicated prediction on the bottom, which is the probabilistic prediction. And it's relatively easy to go from the complicated predictions to the more simple ones, but it's generally not so easy to go in the opposite direction. So if I have a probabilistic prediction, it's pretty direct to get a ranking prediction. I just use the probability as a score and use the ranking assigned by the probabilities. Similarly, if I have a ranking prediction and I want to get a hard prediction, I simply choose a threshold. I pick some point in the list, and I say, everything above this point in the list, I'm going to guess yes, and everything below this list, I'm going to guess no. However, going in the opposite direction is not quite so easy. So if I have a list of hard predictions, it's not generally possible to go down and recover the ranking. Um, now, if I have a set of scores, it is possible through a process called calibration to actually extract probabilities from those scores, figure out what's the corresponding probability to a generalized score. That is possible. It is a, a complicated process, not very complicated, but it does require some data and some work, and it's uh, not always exact. Next, I want to introduce the notion of high signal versus low signal problems. And I think we'll see pretty quickly how these connect to the kinds of predictions that we're talking about. Um, but the distinction between high signal problems and low signal problems is that in a high signal problem, it's reasonable to expect to guess y exactly given x. So for example, if, I ha if you give me an image of a cat and want a machine learning model to correctly predict what kind of object it is, it's reasonable to expect that it could guess with near certainty that this is a cat. And we know that it's reasonable because we as humans see that same image, get the same data, and are able to be very, very certain that that is a cat. So we know that there's enough information in the image to conclude with near certainty the correct answer. Similarly, it's unreasonable that the same x would give different y in different cases if you're dealing with a high signal problem. So if I see an image and then I see the exact same image, I would never expect to see that in one case it's a cat and in one case it's a dog. Um, so that's another characteristic of a high signal problem. And so in high signal problems, they're generally linked to the kinds of problems where you'd want to make hard predictions. Um, because your, your probability distribution ideally should be so concentrated around a single possible outcome because you have so much information about the target in your predictors. Now, low signal problems are just the opposite of the above points that I've delineated. 
Um, in a low signal problem, it's unreasonable to guess y exactly given x. So for example, in that loan prediction problem, loan default prediction, um, it's unreasonable to say, I'm absolutely certain this person will pay back their loan, or I am absolutely certain this person will not pay back their loan. Um, and analogously, it's quite reasonable that the same x could give different y in different cases. So I could have two borrowers borrowing the same exact amount with the same current income, the same job history, and one of them might default on their loan and the other would not. And that would be totally reasonable and, and in fact somewhat expected. And so in low signal problems, you're generally going to want to make probabilistic predictions. It's a little bit unreasonable to expect that you should be able to make hard predictions and for them to be very, very useful. So here are some examples of high signal problems versus low signal problems. So image classification we've talked about is a high signal problem. We know that when we see an image, we know there's enough information in the image to determine what kind of object it is. Similarly, speech recognition. When we hear a sound wave, we know the written text that it should correspond to, and so that there's enough information there to be able to get that sentence with very, very high certainty. Examples of low signal problems are things like fraud detection. So uh, in most fraud detection problems, because fraud is so rare and generally difficult to detect, um, you'll often have the case where even something with a 10% probability of fraud is considered a very, very high probability of fraud for a model to output. And that's why, for example, you'll get calls from your bank asking you to verify transactions. And you'll notice that a lot of the times it's, it's totally legitimate transactions that they're calling you about. And that's the nature of this problem. It's just a low signal problem. It's unreasonable to say that you could say with certainty that something is fraud. Similarly, loan default prediction we talked about, again, shouldn't expect to be able to say exactly which people are going to default on their loan. You really can only get to range of the probabilities for different kinds of borrowers. And two other problems are churn prediction, which is very common uh, for any sort of subscription service to determine who's going to cancel their subscription. And hospital readmission, which is about the patient who leaves the hospital, what's the probability that they'll come back to the hospital within, say, 30 days. Um, in both of these cases, again, it's very difficult to say with certainty that somebody will churn or not churn or that a patient will readmit or not readmit. So the, the title of this lecture was uh, A Discrete Probabilistic Approach to Classification. And, and here's where the probabilistic part of that title comes in. Um, in, in the lectures that follow and, and in, in the content I'm going to provide in this channel, we're going to take a probabilistic approach to prediction, which means our goal is always going to be to predict the probability of y equals y given x equals x for the current value x. So, so put another way, that means given that set of predictors, given our sort of test case, we're going to give a probability distribution on y, on all the different possible outcomes of y. And if we're very, very certain, then we'll output a probability distribution that's near 1 at one particular value of y and very small uh, in other cases. But we're, we're, we're never going to, not never, but typically not going to default to uh, giving hard predictions. And to justify this point of view, um, I would argue that most problems that data scientists and machine learning practitioners face are low signal problems. Obviously, this is quite subjective. Um, if you work in image recognition and you're doing lots of image classification type problems or speech type problems, you might be working in a domain where most of the problems are high signal. But I would argue that if you look across industries, um, across the, the variety of things that data scientists in general are called upon to build models for, that most of them are quite low signal problems. Um, and you know, I've illustrated that with some of the examples I gave before. And a third point I'll make is that even the high signal problems benefit from a probabilistic approach. And there's a few reasons for that. 
One is that there's often ambiguity in the correct answer. So while your object classifier maybe should be able to tell with certainty that this image is of a fish, it might be somewhat uncertain as to whether it's a large mouth bass or a striped bass. Um, and so it's important for a machine learning model to be able to output an answer where it says, I think it's either this or this with these relative probabilities. Related is that there are always unexpected sources of error that you might not even be aware of or not even think about. So it's, it's unreasonable to say with absolute certainty, with probability one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to predict this thing to be true. Because there's always a chance of, for example, mislabeled data. There's a chance that um, data got corrupted. There's a chance that your input is not what you thought it was. So you should always leave a margin of error in your prediction for those things. And I think it's very important for machine learning models to accurately represent their own confidence in their own predictions. This is very, very important for, for some of the more social aspects of the use of machine learning models. A third point I'll make is that log loss and what's also called cross entropy is, is used as the training metric typically in neural networks. So this is a probabilistic approach the, the output of the neural network is actually a probability distribution that later gets thresholded into a hard prediction. And so even in some of these high signal problems, they will make use of this probabilistic approach. And finally, I'll say, that as, we sh as we demonstrated earlier, going from a probabilistic prediction to a hard prediction is quite easy. But if you start with a hard prediction, it's hard to recover the, the probabilities of the rankings underneath it. And so it's always better to stick, start with the probabilistic prediction and only threshold that if and when it's necessary. Okay, thank you very much for, for joining me on this lecture. Um, if you're interested, please continue to part two. We're gonna talk about training data and its representation. Uh, please like and like the video and subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you're interested, please make an account at www.numeristical.com. Um, I'll be doing some live events periodically, and there's a Slack channel, which I'll be using as the mode of communication for those live events. And so if you make an account at numeristical.com, you'll be able to join those live events and, and participate more directly. Thank you very much, and have a great day.